Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is another reaction to a riddle video. I don't know actually, when was the last time I did a riddle reaction? I don't really know. But I know they do a lot of sort of concept videos or prediction videos. Is concept even the right term? I don't think it is. On like things, I don't know, just weird scenarios that could happen in the world, not could happen that. I don't know, it's just weird to think about. I mean, this title is, what if we move the weather from Jupiter to Earth for 10 seconds? Now, obviously this isn't gonna happen, I know, but that's just sort of what I'm saying. It's just sort of like a, an idea of something so outlandish, something so crazy. But it's still interesting to see, in my opinion, but we're gonna check this out. Hopefully you're going to enjoy. Sorry for the inconsistencies recently. I've been on, a, like, on and off of the YouTube reactions and just posting in general, to be honest. I've been just, I don't know, staying silent. Not even staying silent, I've just been quiet, to be honest. But um, yeah, we're working our way back to it. I might stream later, but by the time I've recorded this, I've probably streamed if I have. Um, I'm going to do a live reaction to the Lumino, um, the Lumino Jack the Ripper reaction. It's like an hour long, so yeah, I've had a lot of requests for that, so we're going to do that reaction live. But um, yeah, man, we're just going to jump into this. Thank you all for the support, like the continuous support. Shout out to my Instagram and my Twitter links in the description for those interested in following. But let's just jump into this, man. Home of the world's worst weather. So reads the inscription on the sign hanging at the entrance to the meteorological station on Mount Washington, USA. Indeed, you wouldn't even wish living in this place on your worst enemy. In 1934, a record wind speed was recorded at Mount Washington, 321 kilometers or 199 miles an hour, slightly less than inside a tornado. In 2004, the coldest wind chill temperature recorded was minus 75 degrees Celsius. That's minus 103 Fahrenheit. But can this really be considered the worst weather in the world? If by world we mean the whole universe, or at least the solar system, then there are certainly places with worse weather. I mean, there's literally a raging storm continuously on Jupiter. I mean, I think by now I've learned that on Earth, the weather here does not compare at all to most of the planets in our solar system, to be honest. But I mean, yeah, I'm going to be interested to see just how crazy this would be. And again, I know it's, it's a possibility that won't ever happen, but it's just interesting. For example, Jupiter. What would happen if we experienced the weather conditions from Jupiter here on Earth for just 10 seconds? To achieve this kind of weather, we'd need to first make our planet more like Jupiter. First of all, for this, you need to remove most of the chemical elements and leave basically just hydrogen and helium. So we're done. True, the amount of these gases on Earth in comparison with Jupiter is quite small. Therefore, it'd be necessary to scrounge up all we can from across the universe and gather up a mixture of hydrogen and helium equal to about 318 terrestrial masses in order to get anywhere close to the mass of the gas giant. As a result, all the collected atoms of hydrogen and helium would begin to become attracted to each other so they would condense and shrink. This process, though, could take millions of years. So we'll fast forward a little bit so that Earthlings can fully appreciate... Yeah, just skip over that, because <laughs> it's not going to happen anyway. Just pretend it happens tomorrow. I hope that's what it does. I, don't wanna... I just want to see like the consequences and what's going to happen to us if this did occur. Jupiter's weather conditions for 10 Never seconds. Really so sense. now we have a new Earth with much higher gravity. Therefore, if your weight is now about 70 kilograms or 154 pounds, under the new gravity conditions, it would increase to 161 kilograms or 355 pounds. But believe me, this is not the worst thing that will happen in the next 10 seconds. When you find out what else, you'll fall down and collapse, literally. So this is gonna sound so dumb. Do you just, <laughs> you don't just get, oh, the voice crack. You don't just get fat, like that's not what's gonna happen. I guess you just weigh that much because of like gravity and all this kind of stuff. You don't just instantly grow double in size, right? I mean, I don't know, is gravity weird like that? Would it just make you fucking, just, I don't know. It's fuck, that's a weird one. I mean, I guess it's just how gravity you sort of, I don't know, I don't know. But yeah, man, we'd all be doing a lot worse if we were living on Jupiter because if we were all double our size, more than double, 
Bro. <laughs> because there's nothing more to stand on. After all, the surface of the Earth, in the form that we're used to feeling under our feet, simply ceases to exist. Instead, only different states of hydrogen will remain. In the upper atmosphere, it will float in the form of gas, and just below, whole oceans are formed from liquid hydrogen. At a depth of 40,234 kilometers, or 25,000 miles, it will compress so strongly that it will become harder and denser than rock, turning into so-called metallic hydrogen. It's formed due to high pressure, which is because Water getting harder than rock. That is ridiculous. Because of the huge mass of the planet. A large mass, in turn, entails two more unpleasant surprises. The accelerated rotation of the planet around its axis and a much higher temperature. As for the latter, the temperature will become incredibly diverse. The core will be a hellish 35,700 degrees Celsius. That's 64,292 Fahrenheit. This is almost seven times hotter than the sun. It will be a little cooler at the point where hydrogen changes from a gas into a liquid. 6,000 degrees Celsius or 10,832 Fahrenheit. True, it's unlikely you'll have time to feel this excruciating heat. Indeed, before you reach it, high pressure will crush you into a pancake. If you find yourself in the upper atmosphere, then instead of hellish heat, there will be a bitter cold. Minus 145 Celsius or... It's crazy how it can be so... Di obviously, Jupiter's huge, so it makes sense. But I guess speaking in terms... Of, uh, speaking in terms of Earth, so the Earth size, it's crazy how you can be at one point that's so damn cold, and then the other point is just crazy hot. I mean, I know our core is hot, but I don't know. I just find it's kind of wild. But I guess it's just... Well, it's just how it is, isn't it? But, I mean... I was sort of more thinking this is going to go into, like... Okay, we've got Earth. We've got, like... Um, like it is how it is, it's just the weather, like in terms of the weather, like the rain or the storms or just this kind of stuff. I don't know if they were going to go into like, we couldn't even stand. Like I thought it was just going to go into that, that other stuff, but maybe that would just be too complex, I don't know. For 229 Fahrenheit. However, oh. being in the cold will not last long, as you'll immediately fall and meet the warm air currents flowing upward from the center of the planet. These currents, together with the accelerated rotation of the planet, will also force the atmosphere to move. So you'll have to withstand a powerful wind rushing at a speed of 140 meters or 459 feet per second. This is almost two times stronger than the highest recorded wind near the home of the world's worst weather. On wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. 450 powerful wind rushing at a speed of 140 meters or 459 feet per second. This is almost two times stronger than the highest recorded wind near the home of the world's worst weather on Mount Washington. After just 10 seconds in the Jovian hurricane, you'll be almost a mile from your original location. Another scenario is that you'll be sucked into a tornado, which will be whirling at a speed of 135 meters or 443 feet per second. Sounds a little fun then. This Jeez. is the usual speed of a tornado here on Earth, but now they'll cover the entire surface of the planet. Perhaps. Is that how big it is? It's literally, wait, the, 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 like the storm on Jupiter is literally the size of Earth. Wait, wait, have I heard this? Sorry, I keep going back. I want to like try and... Another scenario is that you'll be sucked into a tornado, which will be whirling at a speed of 135 meters or 443 feet per second. This is the usual speed of a tornado here on Earth, but now they'll cover the entire surface of the planet. Perhaps the most noticeable change that you'll see in the first seconds is the lack of oxygen. The obvious result of which is that everyone will suffocate. But this may not happen in such a short time, since our lungs will be able to tolerate asphyxiation for an extra 10 seconds. But it will be plenty of time for other dangers. So, all the cars on the planet will stop abruptly and break down, while the planes will fall right out of the sky on the heads of the stunned people below. 
I think that's the last of their worries, to be honest. <laughs> if within 10 seconds, they're, they're already gone, man. So, I mean, that's not going to be that much of an issue to be Because fair. all internal combustion engines will simply stop working. Following work. suit, most buildings on the planet will collapse, as oxygen is the main element helping concrete to maintain its structure. Although it will probably not be possible to see it with your own eyes, the sky will become completely black and there will be nothing more to reflect the sun's rays. Oxygen was making this possible before as well. Next, the air pressure will change so quickly and dramatically that your eardrums will burst almost immediately. This has its advantages. Now you'll not have to listen to the suffering screams of the people all around you. After all, nothing can fry us more and better than cosmic radiation. And this will happen because the ozone layer will also disappear. Given that the Earth is much closer to the Sun than Jupiter, the radiation exposure will be several times stronger. Therefore, after the passage of these 10 seconds of hell, there will be hardly any form of life left on Earth. Even the most resistant to extreme conditions will be affected. But then there will be no more clever men who ask questions like, what if we create the weather conditions of Jupiter on Earth? Fortunately for us, such an event in reality does not threaten us. I mean, it doesn't threaten us, but I mean, it's kind of, I mean, like, maybe it does, I don't, I don't know, maybe, I mean, at like, this point, this specific thing won't happen, but weather, obviously, events in general are still a worry. But like, it's just crazy how fragile we are, man. I say this quite a lot. I say quite a lot. I say this sometimes in videos like this because it just makes you rethink everything for me personally. And it's like, yeah, man. <laughs> if the oxygen on our planet like lowers by a certain percentage or what, I, I don't know, the carbon dioxide or whatever it is <laughs> goes up or goes down, all these different things, the helium goes up, goes down, just all these... um gases and all that kind of stuff they like it sort of fluctuates we could be fucked i mean i don't really know we could be screwed because of how fragile we are we need it to be a certain way so it matches how we want to live which makes you realize how lucky we are i mean i see this a lot because of videos like this again but like god damn man everything is just in place for us to live and thrive at this current point in a hundred years time man it could be all gone, but I mean, yeah, I don't know I'm getting so deep. This is how these videos get me, man. I'm, I'm not going to lie. It's not even that serious because it's not going to happen, but it just makes me think like this. To have the weather conditions of Jupiter, the Earth must first at least become <laughs> like it. In theory, gas giants may eventually become Earth-like planets, but the reverse transformation is impossible, at least in our universe. Nevertheless, Jupiter, along with Venus, from time to time, are still trying to ruin Earth's climate. <laughs> Scientists note that the orbits of these planets have affected our weather for at least the last 215 million years. Every 405,000 years, gravitational oscillations between Earth, Venus, and Jupiter bring us abnormally cold winters and very hot summers. Droughts are unusually strong and the rains cause severe floods. Researchers claim... Isn't that to do with the ice caps and stuff? I didn't really realise planets can affect our weather. Bro, the world's crazy, man. There's so many different things that affect everything, bro. It's crazy. We are now somewhere in the middle of this cycle. It's probably already time to think about protection in case other planets again decide to interfere with our earthly life. Or maybe NASA should develop a plan to destroy Jupiter and Venus. Yeah. <laughs> For fuck's sake. Isn't Jupiter like the reason we don't get hit by asteroids and stuff? For fuck's sake. Come on. Plus, how are you going to destroy Jupiter? It's like 10 million times the size of us. Okay, maybe not that big, but it's a lot bigger. Then we'll get rid of their influence on our climate. But at the same time, we'll get a lot of other problems more serious than the abnormal heat or cold. But I'll already be discussing these problems in one of our upcoming releases. In the meantime, you can go outside and take a walk in the nice weather. It doesn't matter where you are watching this video now, whether it's the northern cities of Alaska or equatorial Africa, compared to other places in the universe, the weather on Earth is always good. 
If heavy rain, snow, heat, or frost sometimes ruin your plans, don't worry. Just remember this video and how your life would be on Jupiter right now. That's all for now, and thank you for your... Bro, I just... Uh, in, the in the back of my head now, I'm just thinking, like, imagine there is just a civilization across the universe that's just like us, but their weather's, like, completely... Like, like, the, the people there, or the, the aliens there, or whatever, the life there, can survive completely different temperatures. They come here, and they're like, they their bodies can't acclimatise, or they can't sort of handle how hot or how cold it is. We go there, and we can't handle it either. And it's just like, maybe we've just sort of adapted to be able to sort of acclimatise to this. And maybe when there's an ice age, we'll be able to adapt to that. I don't really know, because obviously, I've never experienced an ice age, but um, I mean... Yeah, I do wonder what would happen if an ice age happened, like, in the next 50 years, like, would we, would society be able to function like it is? I don't know how, how cold does it get? Cold do ice ages get? <clears throat> 7.8 degrees Celsius. So it, so it is livable, isn't it? I guess I don't know. I mean, that doesn't look as bad as I thought it'd be. But I guess it depends where you live. Where I live, it's probably going to be colder than somewhere like I don't know, LA or Mexico, or just like the desert sort of regions, pretty much. Obviously, there's cold deserts, but like the Saharan desert, etc. I do wonder that, but I mean, you know, let's see some of the comments. This is literally just Earth becoming Jupiter rather than experiencing Jupiter's weather. This is what I'm saying, bro. I came in for the weather, not for the fucking destruction of earth completely like god damn destroys jupiter asteroids it's time boys my man's making 10 seconds sound like sound like <laughs> like sound like time and anime oxygen is the element that keeps concrete working so with an atmosphere of hydrogen would cause most of earth's buildings to collapse and four inches of <laughs> hour winds wouldn't do that first i think nasa should make an earth-sized condom for protection <laughs> that's what i'm talking about man Oh, come on, NASA, bro. Don't, don't, like, don't not do this, man. You could save us all. Just get us a massive condom. I mean, to be thinking about it, the fucking, what's it called? The thing around Earth. The magnetic field? Is it that? Oh, my God, I'm so done. What? It's not the magnetic field. What is it? The ozone layer. It, right? The ozone. <laughs> oh, my days. It is like sort of like a condom in a sense for our atmosphere, right? It sort of stops the sun's like rays giving us worse radiation and all that kind of stuff, I'm pretty sure. That is kind of like our condom, I guess, but I don't know. But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this one. I mean, I'm just rambling at this point, but yeah, the reactions are back. Like I said, I've, I've probably streamed by this time when I posted this, but if you want to watch my stream reaction, because I'm going to do a Lamina reaction to his recent video, you can just click on my channel and find it there. But yeah, thank you for the support. Until next time, like, subscribe.